Today on The Joy of Editing, I'm going to show you a hidden gem inside of Lightroom Classic. You also find it in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, and that is the Tone Curves Refined Saturation Slider. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me today. Boy, do I have a good one for you. This is a really nice hidden feature. It's kind of right out in front of you in Lightroom, and that is the refined saturation slider. You see the slider right here? It's grayed out right now because I do not have an adjustment here. And if you're not looking for it, you'll just bypass it. But it is super powerful and very helpful, and let me show you what I mean. Now, as most of you already know, the tone curve in Lightroom and Photoshop is a very powerful tool. And we can add contrast with it. We can color grade with it. We can do a lot of things. But I want to show you one thing I do a lot with a tone curve, and that is add contrast. Now, we can make a simple S curve. For instance, on the highlight tones like right here, I can lift up and add a little bit of highlights and come down into the shadow area and click on the curve and pull this down like this and add some shadows here and get a nice bit of contrast in the image. But one thing that happens when we add this contrast, we also cause the saturation to increase. And that's what this refined saturation is all about. Now, sometimes that increased saturation can be really nice, but other times it's too strong. In Photoshop, we could change the blend mode from normal to luminosity and totally get rid of that saturation increase. Now, when this slider is at 100%, this is the maximum amount of saturation that was added from the contrast curve. But this slider lets me hone in as much saturation as I want. In other words, as I drag this to the left, you'll notice the saturation is starting to decrease. Now I can move it the whole way down till I get over here to zero. So I'm adding no extra saturation. Now in Photoshop, if I had this same contrast curve and put it in a luminosity blend mode, it would look like this. We would have no saturation increase. And a lot of times when I add contrast to an image and put the layer in luminosity blend mode. I don't like the way it looks, but with this refine slider, I can drag this to the right and start to add just a little bit of that saturation back in. You see that? And maybe I may like it like right here at 50%. Now let me shut off this layer. Here's before the contrast and here is after, but I like that little bit of saturation increase. But now that little extra saturation in there looks good at 50%. But maybe I don't want even that much. I can take this and dial this back to maybe somewhere right around there, 32%. And now let me shut this off. Here's before the contrast increase, and here's the after. This refined saturation slider is awesome, I must say. And you got to give it a try. Hey, let me know in the comments section below what you think of this refined saturation. Did you know it was there? And if you didn't, I'm glad you do now. Now, wouldn't it be nice if in Photoshop we could get a similar result or maybe the same result, but we do not have a refined saturation with the tone curve in Photoshop. But I have a way to achieve the same result in Photoshop. It's a little bit of a workaround. It's not hard to do, and I'm going to show that to you now. Here we are in Photoshop. Now I have that same image. Now to add a tone curve layer to this image, we could come down here in the Photoshop interface, click right here, and click on Curves. Now just make a tone curve. Just to save time, I'm gonna click the drop down for presets, and I'm gonna click Strong Contrast. Let's put a really strong contrast tone curve in here. But you see all that extra saturation? It's really oversaturated. Now we could use a saturation adjustment and try to pull that down, or we could go and change the blend mode from normal to say Luminosity. Now, this is what it would look like if I was using Lightroom with the same tone curve and I pulled the refined saturation slider the whole way to the left. But you know what? I don't like that look. I would like a little bit of saturation increase. But let me show you 
how we can achieve this here in Photoshop. And I have to give a big shout out to Tony Kuiper. I was recently talking to Tony and I said, Tony, wouldn't it be great if they had that refined saturation for the tone curves in Photoshop? And Tony said, I don't think it would work in Photoshop due to the way we have a layer based system with blend modes. But he says, I have a workaround and I use this all the time that you can achieve the same result right here in Photoshop. Let me show you. Let's start from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and drag this layer into the trash. Now, what we want to do is get a curves adjustment layer. So we're going to click right here and click on curves. And again, what I'll do is just come to the presets just to save some time. Click the drop down and let's use strong contrast so we can really see the change. I know that's way too much, but forgive me for that. I just want to show you how this works. So there we go. We have a nice strong contrast. Now this layer is in the normal blend mode. What I want you to do is take the opacity and let's drag it back to 50% right there. Now what we want to do is duplicate this layer. We could do a command or control J and that will duplicate the layer. And now with these two layers at 50%, it would be the same if this layer was shut off and this layer was set to 100%. Okay, so 50 and 50. But here's the trick. You want to change the top layer from a normal blend mode to a luminosity blend mode. And now what we have is the same effect we would get in Lightroom if we took that refine saturation slider and drug it to 50%. You see what I'm doing here? So now we only have 50% of that increased contrast boost from the curves adjustment. Now you don't have to settle for just a 50% decrease in the saturation. What if you wanted more? What I could do is take this opacity of the luminosity curves adjustment layer and change this to say 75%. So I'm reducing even more of that saturation. But in turn, I would have to come down to this normal blend mode curves adjustment layer and change this opacity down to 25%. So if I click on this top luminosity blend mode layer, it's at 75%. This bottom layer is at 25%. They're maintaining 100%. That's the key. That's all you have to remember. So when you increase the amount of the top luminosity layer, you are decreasing the saturation. When you decrease the top luminosity layer, you are increasing saturation. But remember, whatever you change this to, you always want to maintain a 100% balance between the two. That way your contrast curve will remain constant, but you can alter the amount of saturation increase or decrease. Now let's do one more scenario just so this cements into your head. So now let's say we want more saturation. So what I'll do on this top curves adjustment in the luminosity blend mode I'm going to drag this back to 30%. So on this bottom normal blend mode curves adjustment, what do you think I need to do? Well, that top one's at 30%. So on this one, I need to maintain 100%. So I'll drag this up to 70. Okay, so now I've increased the saturation. I have the same contrast, but increased saturation. So you can decrease saturation, increase saturation, but you'll always maintain the amount of contrast that you initially applied. But remember, these two layers always have to maintain 100% balance. In other words, this one is at 70% opacity, this one's at 30. So that adds up to 100%. But it's just that easy. Do it a few times and you'll say, this is really great. Hey, thanks, Tony, for this tip. I really appreciate it. And if you appreciate that, let Tony know in the comments below. Tony comes up with some really cool stuff, as you know, if you use the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Now remember, in Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and in Adobe Camera Raw, you have that refined saturation adjustment for the tone curve. But however, in Photoshop, you can get the same result using two curves adjustment layers as I showed you here. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.